Hi, I'm Joe Finsternis, and tonight I'm going to be talking to you about a movie called Home Sweet Home. So, Home Sweet Home has your pretty basic kind of cookie cutter home invasion plot where this couple, uh, Frank and Sarah, come home one night after a date and they find out that their home has been invaded by some sort of intruder. Now, I really like how this movie sort of hits the ground running at the start. Like, as soon as I pushed play on the DVD, there were no logos or any bullshit like that to start out with. It just started on the shot of a woman's bloody face, and it kind of gives you a preview of the bad things that are about to happen. And the film doesn't even start off from Sarah and Frank's point of view. You start off following the killer in this movie as he's breaking into their home and invading their privacy while they're out on, you know, their date. Uh, and it gets pretty damn creepy to watch, although it does get a little monotonous at times. Like, there's one point where he, like, turns on this uh, music box that's hanging over the baby's crib, and then he opens a tube of lipstick and closes it again. And I was thinking, okay, I'm starting to fall out of this now. It was interesting. <laughs> But, um, also, if you're worried about whether there's going to be a baby in Jeopardy in this movie, I know that some people are sensitive to that. You never see the baby in this movie. It, he's being watched over by the grandparents while all of this bad stuff is going down. And, um, but after those, uh, sort of meh moments, it does, uh, start to pick up again as the killer actually starts preparing for uh, the arrival of this couple. You know, he puts on this suit to keep too much blood from getting on his clothes. He uh, nails the window shut and he puts on this mask. And I love the way that the mask looks in this movie. You know how a lot of movie killers will just have like these um, masks with black eyes and you can't see their eyes through the mask and it kind of and it almost has that dehumanizing effect. This mask actually had a pair of eyes on it, which made it so much creepier. They were just these unblinking, soulless eyes. Um, after Sarah and Frank get home, though, the movie starts to delve into these really lame jump scare moments, and it's really cheap. Like, there's a moment where Sarah puts her hand on Frank's shoulder, and the music just goes, Ugh, and... <laughs> Yeah, and they even used a cat at one point to elicit a jump scare. And it wasn't like a screeching cat or anything like that, thankfully. It was just like jumping on the bed and going, meow. And then the music did that duh thing again. And I was just thinking, come on, movie, you are better than that. I mean, after this sophisticated setup that they had going at the beginning, I was just thinking, really? But, you know, once the killer does finally start coming after the couple and he comes out of hiding it does get really uneasy you know as he's sort of toying with these people especially Sarah it's uh, not really the easiest uh, <clears throat> excuse me it's not really the easiest home invasion movie to sit through at times um, and I love the kind of simple setup that the film had going for it uh, when I was reviewing The Perfect Host, you know, I complained about the fact that nobody gives a shit about what's going on in the outside world, and they kept cutting to, like, these two police detectives that I really didn't give a shit about. But, uh, this movie never makes that mistake. The entire thing takes place inside this one house. In fact, I think there are maybe two shots throughout the entire movie where you're looking at the outside of the house, and that's about it. Um, now, with all of the good things that I've said about this movie, you know, on top of my complaints about the jump scares and the sort of uh, meh moments at the beginning, I have to say this movie does kind of fall apart for me within the final act. I'm not going to spoil too much here, but... There's a certain point where Sarah has this opportunity where she's about to do something that could be greatly beneficial to saving her life, 
and then instead of going through with it, she just stands there for several seconds doing nothing like an idiot. And it's, it's not even like the killer was close enough to hear her or anything. She's just like, And then, you know, she finally does something, and it's not uh, going through with the thing that could possibly save her life. Instead, she just runs right the fuck into harm's way. And it was at that point that I kind of stopped caring about her. And this really wasn't a conscious thing. I'm not trying to sound cold here, but after she made this incredibly stupid decision that just really pissed me off to watch... I was just kind of sitting there thinking, okay, we've got 10 minutes left now, five minutes, like I was checking the movie's running time. That right there is not a good sign, my friends. Um, and even the killer gets a little sloppy. Like, at the beginning, I got the impression that he had invaded homes before and he knew exactly what he was doing. He was uh, being so careful about everything. And he was so confident, and it didn't come off as, you know, so confident that he was stupid. But then at the end, he gets so confident that it's stupid. And he even ends up leaving some evidence at the scene of the crime. Um, I will say this much, you know, one more positive for the movie that I do have to point out is that it had a pretty interesting twist at the end that I liked. But, uh... In the end, I would say that it comes out to being just barely above average. I will say that, you know, some elements made it worth watching once, but I'm probably going to end up taking this DVD to Half Price Books. Um, still, if it sounds like the, mov the kind of movie that you might enjoy, there are definitely worse films that you can watch out there. And, um... Home Sweet Home came highly recommended to me by a friend, and I would, and I know that he's going to end up watching this video. And um, I do still really appreciate the recommendation. If you do have more obscure titles that you would like to throw my way, feel free to do so. I'm going to stay open-minded about this. This one just, you know, kind of missed the mark for me. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about Hope. <clears throat> Why can I not talk? Anyway, that's all I've got to say about Home Sweet Home. I hope you all have a good one.